Here we're going to do another problem here, but this one's going to be a continuous beam. Again, I'm just going to go to global, uh, continuous beam design, boom, click OK. All right, and I've got 25 foot spans. I like to click on this grid thing right here. I want to draw the grid. I've got 25 foot spans, so to help me out, I'm going to have three in the X direction at 25 feet. And really, I just need one at one, really. One at one. And that, that'll be good. So, I'll, boom. Done. And now, I want to define my materials. I look at my concrete material. I'm going to mess around with three KSI concrete this time. Close that up. Now, I want to define the section sets. So, I'm going to go to concrete here. And I'm going to say, beam. And this, again, is just to start me off. I'm going to guess some depth to width ratio that I like, around 1.5 to 2-ish. 24 by 12. All right, I like that for a beam. I click on OK. So I have a section set that I defined as, how about I'll call it continuous beam. So you call it whatever you want. I define that. Now we want to go to member design rules. The max depth in this case might be something that's limiting you and your structural design. So let's say I don't want to go anything beyond 3 feet. So I'll say 36 inches. And I don't want anything smaller than 12 inches. I don't want anything larger than 20 inches wide. And I don't want anything smaller than 12 inches wide. This max bending check, it is just your basic design relationships turned into a ratio. I go to that rebar. And here, again, I'm going to choose the rebar that I want. You know what? I like 6 to 10. Those are pretty typical. For shear reinforcement, number 4 seems all right. Maybe I want number 3 only. Okay? But number 4 is pretty good. This beam is loaded pretty big. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go with the number 4 stirrup. Here are my cover requirements. I'm happy. Close that up. And now I'm ready to draw, I believe. All the wall rules, the seismic rules, we're not worried about that right now. So why don't you go ahead and draw it. I'm sure you can draw this faster than I can. I'm going to click on the members. I'm going to choose concrete. I'm going to assign a section set here. It's going to be that beam. Click on apply. Go point to point. 25 foot spans. Span one, span two, span three. Click on escape. Clear the arrows. Apply the boundary conditions. I'm going to do pin, roller, roller, pin. So pin, apply, pin, pin. I'm going to put rollers in the middle. Roller. You know, it's, it'll, it's going to work. In my experience, it's worked without it. But if, if you're concerned that it's not, you can just go ahead and put fixed. If you're, you know, it's only like one click, right? So it's not a big deal. So the roller, fix it, click apply. Put N2, N3, have the roller support. Clear that up. Now I'm going to apply the loading and the load cases. So why don't you try to do that on your own, please? I'm going to apply the dead load. Dead load. DL. LL. Everywhere. LL. Odd. LL. Even. So I have live load on all spans, odd spans, and even spans. Makes me happy. I'm not even going to do the category. I'm going to close that up. Now I'm going to define my loads and apply them. So here I'm in the global Y direction pointing downwards. My dead load is negative 2 kip per foot. Negative 2 kip per foot dead load. Apply. Bam. 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 Now here I have the other live loads. Boom minus 4 kit per foot, negative 4, and I want it on all spans. Click on apply. Then I'm going to do it on the odd spans. Apply. Oh, undo that. Odd span, so 1 and 3, and then on the even spans. Apply. Done! They're just jealous because we're so loud. Trust me. <laughs> we have our basic load cases. Our load combinations is my 1.2 dead plus 1.6 live. So everywhere, don't forget that P delta. Uh, let's see, this is that dead load. So BLC, basic love and care of your structure includes dead load. So 1.2. And then load case, this would be, oh, 
Live load everywhere. Boom. 1.6. Uh, 1.2 dead plus 1.6 live. Odd. And this would be 3. And 1.2 dead plus 1.6 live on the even spans. And that would be 4. And I have my load combinations over here. I've defined those. I feel happy. I am going to solve the batch. And the moment of truth, after get rid of ignoring the instability warning, which probably wouldn't be good if you're doing a full on 3D structure, get rid of this table here. I don't want to see my loading. Click on member detail. Use it, use the envelope. Thank you for using the envelope. And bam, we got a design, right? Look at that with a uh, uh, 12 inch width, 24 inch depth. You got to, you know, obviously subtract the cover requirements and stuff. But look at that in the middle of the beam. Boom, look, it even tells you right here. Remember that, that nasty graph we had to do on Wednesday and figure out the spacing of the shear reinforcement at various locations. Here's the 12 number fours at four inches near the support. Nine number fours at eight inches right here. 10 number fours at eight inches. 23 number four, bam, bam, right? Now check this out. Now you can optimize this, this thing, right? Go click on suggested design and it's saying, hey, that 24 by 12 is all right, but you know what? It might be better if you did a 32 by 18. Oh, really? Okay. All right, so here all you gotta do is right click and click solve again using the suggested shapes. It will redo everything for you in terms of changing the sizing of the member. Solve again, okay, and then okay. Uh, ignore you, bye bye warning, okay. And look, no suggested shapes anymore. I click on the detail and look, it's using a 32 by 18. Oh, and here it is again, 32 by 18 with the suggested shape. The, the thing you wanna look at is that bending check. It's trying to get that bending check probably closer to one. So right here, if you see, remember that top bending check? That is useful in telling you how close phi MN is with respect to MU, okay? And same thing with the shear check right here, 0.951. So when you're in that 0.9 region, that's pretty good, okay?